I want him to come in and tell you about the adversity behind that bakery. So y'all give it up for my man Key One. So y'all give it up for P. Nate and Wendell. Let's go. You can bring an NBA guy in here, such as Rasheed Wallace, who I've known for, you know, 22 years. But I know him, know him personally. They only knew Rasheed Wallace, the basketball player. And I just told him, when you come in, just let it all go. The beautiful thing about the real speakers you have 15, 16 young men listening to one speaker and their story is so profound that you can have 15 or 16 takeaways from it. There's not one essential thing that I want them to take away. I want them to take away something that they can apply to their lives and make their lives better. You know, anyone can go on YouTube and, and read a, a book on how to be successful, but you know, if it doesn't resonate, then it's irrelevant. I wanted guys that were really raw, that would come in and tell their heartfelt stories and allow that to resonate to our young men because a lot of those young men can identify because they come from underprivileged, dysfunctional, no father, you know, whatever the case may be. My journey is, is, is one with a lot of trials, tribulation. Uh, I started hustling when I was in the 10th grade. And so, not even two years out of high school, on the way back from New York, I got busted uh, on a Greyhound with a half a key of coke. And so um, I wound up doing 42 months in prison. I changed my life, man. I, I cut off every negative person out of my life. Every negative person. So take advantage of all this educational y'all. Real talk, I can't stress that enough. Not only as student athletes, but as black men on everything. Y'all y'all read the news. Y'all see what's happening in the news out here to us right now, man. We targets. It's like it's like back in the days, you know, back in them early 18, 1900s, we targets, man. We a threat. But we don't see it like that. We just see it as living. But we a threat. And he told me there was a guy that lives not far from him. And he kept getting kept getting locked up. Kept getting locked up. And so, you know, the code, kind of what Coach y'all was talking about, your boy get locked up, you get him out. Dude kept getting locked up, kept getting locked up. By this time, about $100,000 a year spent out. Yeah. And he said, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't paying that no more. I ain't doing it no more. Dude put a hit out on him. It took me about six months to get adjusted to just being a squab, just going to work and just doing the right thing. But I said, I ain't going back to prison. And so I started working a little bit, then I got laid off my job. And I went on one interview doing the same type of work. And they called me and I was on 147. They said, Mr. Hessel, we started to inform you, you didn't get the job on the inside of me. And some said, step out on your gift. I ain't have nothing but $30 a hand mixer standing in my town out in this recipe. But I had the main things on the inside of me. I had God. First of all, I had a hustler's mentality. I was, I had a perseverance. And I just, I was focused, man. I said, you know what? These bills coming in, let me just get on my hustle. And so I started baking cakes out of my townhouse, going to every barbershop, beauty salon, nail salon. I said, you know what? I ain't even going to get no business license yet. And so when I go out, and go to every barbershop beauty salon, everybody would be laughing. They'd be laughing. They're like, yeah, you know, keep on the one who used to sell all that dope. They're selling cakes now. <laughs> <laughs> they said, man, here he come, cake man. <laughs> and so, <laughs> some on the inside of me said, look, don't fix your eyes on, your, on their faces. Stay focused. I got something for you. It's bigger than this. That was God telling me, stay focused. Don't fix your eyes on their faces. Do what I told you to do. And I started, I, I, I ain't even had no business plan. All I had was a plan to be successful and succeed. It's all work, it's, this, it's your whole temple. This everything, this break down, everything else gonna break down, but this is the strongest muscle though. This is the strongest muscle. Your knee can go out, ankles, anything. Bro broken foot, broken arm can go out. That right there, 
that's always going to be there even after y'all play ball even after y'all sitting up there watching y'all sons or little cousins or you know nephews or whatever playing ball when y'all old heads that mind still going to be there but it start here though let's start here with them books getting them books period point blank but I'm, no, I ain't gonna sugarcoat nothing else because that's what they looking for out there. Uh, I think Coach Mullen did an excellent job of choosing the speakers he did this year, such as Rasheed Wallace when he came in and talked to us about being selfless and playing for our team, teammates and playing as a family and just like bonding together, like spending most of our time together. Like he told us about if we was in class sleeping, if you see one of your teammates sleeping, just nudge him and wake him up, tell him to get, get in his books and stuff like that. And so I said, what, what, what is it that you want? He said, man, I need to get my life right. Now at the time, what I didn't know is he had came back from Atlanta to get his clothes because some people were after him. And he said, I said, well, so what do you want to do? He said, man, I, I want to get, get it right. I want to give my life to the Lord. I said, all right. So we prayed. He said, what you want me to do now? I said, I want you to come back Sunday, volunteer. I want to see where his heart is. It's kind of like when y'all doing all this running and, and I know the, the storm thing that y'all do. Coach trying to see where your heart is. Trying to see where your side. I want to see where his heart was because people come and tell me stuff all the time, every day. Every day, man, I want to do this. Man, I want to do that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to see if you're willing to sacrifice. Just like I know, because I've been around, before you get uniforms, before you get gear, coach want to see how much you're going to sacrifice. So that's what I did with him. I said, come back Sunday. What time you want me to be here? Be here at 8. I ain't going to get it at 8.30. I just want to test his heart. 8 o'clock, he there. We had three services at the time. Stayed the whole time. What you want me to do? Come back tomorrow. You got to work, work tomorrow? No, nah, I'm off on Mondays. But you come back. Find something to do. Came back Monday. Came back Tuesday. Came back Wednesday. Came back Thursday. Came back Friday. This went on for three months. And so eight, after eight years of just grinding and hard work, I went and met with this uh, place called Tycon Properties. They had a, a spot right there in that location in Sutton Station. And it was, it was a bakery, but they had closed down. So I said, that's my spot. I had a couple friends. And it's, it's crazy how, how friendships develop. Sometimes God would develop the friendships at the right time. And so these friends was like, you know, I told them what I was trying to do. And, and both of them was like, look, man, we believe in you. I said, whatever you need, champ, whatever you need to hold or whatever, we got you, man. Just let me, let me know what you need. And so they stood on their word. They looked out for me. And I opened up that storefront February 2012 without going to the bank. The main thing I took away from uh, Kiwan is just his passion and his desire and what he was doing. Um, just the constant fight and struggle he had to go through, you know, turning his whole life around from doing what he know, which is, you know, hustling. He took that to a whole other level by putting the business behind it. And his drive and just, you know, changing the people he around, just blocking out all the negativity and people that wasn't doing any good, he had to just leave those people behind. And I just got from that, like sometimes you gotta leave those people alone, you know, and just surround yourself with a new crowd and you know, a new environment of positive people who wanna do good and wanna see you do good as well. Um, when they stabbed me up, you know what I'm saying, kept stabbing me up, had me for like two hours, went, went through the process, my son and my girl walked in, I told them to run so they won't shoot in any direction, I boom. They, they, they took me out the back door, pillow guns, like, look, I'm gonna kill you, you don't get the money. I was like, all right, I'm ready. Let's do it, you know what I'm saying? I was talking about it, let's do it. So, um, they let me go, boom. Got to do, um, do get an x-ray of me, my first stab wound. They said, uh, we see a black spot right beside your first stab wound. Can we do a biopsy? I said, sure. I came back two weeks later, they said, man, that's cancer. You have a cancer tumor in your body. They said, let me do an MRI and a CT scan with you. I, I did that, came back two weeks later, later, they said, sorry, sir, you got six months to live. You got lymphoma bone cancer. You got lymphoma bone cancer all over your body. 
we can't even catch it. We'll do radiation and chemotherapy, but we ain't making you no promise. And I said, cool. But in the process, I'm, I'm reading the word. I got a spiritual family. They come in from, you know, all over, praying over it. You know, I always knew of the Lord, but I never had a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, <clears throat> to make a small short story, in a year and a half, like a year and a half, I was cured, complete. You know what I'm saying? When I walked through the door and she, and I took my last MRI and CT, CT scan, she said, you have God on your side. You know what I'm saying? She said that I never seen this before. You know what I'm saying? The second people coach brought in were um, when Dev um, came with Pastor Nate. And basically their stories were similar because they both dealt with drugs and something illegal. But at the end of each story, they both changed their life, their lives around. So I mean, it was both, those stories were both touching. They touched me personally because my father was one of those before he passed away. He was a drug dealer. And towards the end of, when he got older, he tried to change his life around. So those two stories kind of hit home for me. Dude, it's, it's, it's the pinnacle, my man, real talk. It's like, I had a flash all at once. When, when that horn went off, I had, a, I had a little epiphany of everything I went through from being a young boy back in the schoolyard. And what you always saying, you got the ball and you say in your head, five, four, three, two. And then in your head, it's that championship game. And if you miss it, what you do? Boom. Oh, he gets the rebound. Oh, he goes back up. You know what? You gonna win that championship. So you could just be like, and it was that feeling, you know, all that hard work, you know, you put in. Them days when I had to catch the bus, I'm walking at least two, three miles to the bus stop, catch the bus to go to the gym after school. All them days when I sat up there, had to burn that midnight oil in college, getting yelled at about this, about that. And dog, when we won it, got that gold ball and they handed us these, and it made it even more sweet because David Stern didn't want us to win it. It was, it was like childbirth, dog. It was like having your first son or daughter as far as like, like that, that whole feeling of accomplishment, yo. And at that point, shit, we was the best in the world. It ain't no excuse out here. Man, I ain't had nothing. Nothing, $30, champ. And one of my friends went and got me some, some bowls from a yard sale. Drake talking about started from the bottom. I started from the curb. <laughs> I made, I made them respect my hustle. You ain't gotta like me, but you gonna respect my grind. There's, there's things that's happened in your life and how you decide to use them. You can use them for evil or you can use them for good.